Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at the best games that are currently announced for the Nintendo Switch for the month of July. Now, as I mentioned every month, we always get a bunch of shadow drops on the Nintendo Switch, especially more on the indie end. But for the big titles or the bigger indie titles, a lot of them are already announced ahead of time for the month of July. So we can already get a pretty good idea of the lay of the land of what are the games to look out for for the next month. Now I hope you're ready because the month of July is packed with big releases and if you're a JRPG fan you're going to have more titles than you can actually play coming out for next month. So I've singled out 13 different titles that I really think we should keep an eye on and that you should be aware of releasing for the month of July. Now, As we go through the content don't forget that if you like this content please hit the like button it's the best way to support the channel and also subscribe if you aren't already. Now the first game on our list is going to be Mythic Ocean that will be releasing on July 2nd. It has a regular sale price of $14.99, however right now there's a pre-order discount at $11.99. What's really fun however is that there is a free downloadable demo that I actually played through. Now this is a really laid back underwater exploration game where basically you have to piece together tidbits of the storyline as you go through the adventure and discover different pieces of information. At the same time, you're helping rebuild the world and shape how it's actually going to turn out. So depending on decisions you're going to come through to the game, the ending will be different through different playthroughs. So for people that like those laid back experiences, there might actually be a really high level of replay value in this game. Now the next game on our list, we zoom forward to July 6th with Ease 9 releasing and this is going to be a no brainer for a lot of people because this is a long standing action RPG series and it is generally a very good one at that. Ease 8 is actually currently on sale right now if you want to pick it up for only $20 and get an idea of how the series plays out. What's really fun right now is with the pre-order bonus, you can actually pick up the digital deluxe at the same price as the regular release. This is, however, a full price release at $60. But let me tell you that if this is anything like its predecessors, it is definitely worth the investment if you are into action RPGs. Now, next, we jump forward once again to July 9th with another game that probably needs little to no introduction and most people that are picking this game up already know about it, that is Monster Hunter Stories 2. Now this is the follow up to Monster Hunter Stories 1, which is basically the Monster Hunter series that's been sort of flipped into a semi RPG style of game because the combats play out more in a turn based format. There's also a much stronger storyline in these gameplays, so it's not just about hunting down monster after monster. And not only that, the monsters actually help you in this game. You can befriend them and they can become companions in your adventure. Right now, this is another huge release full price release at $59.99 for the regular version or with an extra 10 bucks you get at $69.99 a digital deluxe with some visual upgrades. Now next is a game that I have to talk to you about which is Lambs on the Road. The reason why is because the developer actually gave me a full download code for the game. It is being sold for only $3 and it's releasing on July 15th. I just want to give a pure warning before we talk about this game. It only takes about 30 to 35 minutes to complete the whole game currently. But this is really as a sort of launch trial to see if the developer wants to reinvest in making a full fleshed game and storyline. I am a little bit disappointed that we didn't get a little bit more gameplay out of it because even at $3 on the eShop you can sometimes pick up full games. But this is a game that plays out a lot like the Limbo series that we already have on the Switch. The only thing is it's a little bit more story driven and it's set in a post apocalyptic future where basically people are turning into cannibals and a father wants to find his daughter. He has to do that by basically solving different puzzles. Some are very environmental and it's basically trial and error, sort of like the Limbo series. You try, you start over from the last checkpoint and it's normal that you'll have to do two or three tries before finding the right path. The only real downside is by the time I warmed up and started really getting into the game and sort of invested, it sort of ended. And at only 30 minutes for a playthrough, I think a lot of people will be disappointed, but this game has a lot of potential. So if it does take off, we'll most likely get DLC or a follow-up that will really flesh the storyline out. 
So next we have sort of my wild card of the month, which is Mercrotus A Mother's Journey at $11.99 releasing on July 15th. Now Mercrotus is a puzzle platformer and it's giving me serious vibes from Little Nightmares. Like the environments seem creepy and just like that type of gameplay. The only thing so far throughout the whole trailer of the game, we don't see any enemy NPCs. So I don't know if this is a pure puzzle platformer where you never really come around any bosses or any enemy NPCs to play around. But if we do, I really hope they throw that in there because that level of tension could really help a game like this deliver on a really awesome experience. Next, on July 16th, we have probably the one game that definitely doesn't need an introduction, and that is the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD releasing. It's releasing obviously at a full price of $59.99, and this is the remake of a Wii game. The only thing, I'll be honest, it'll be an original playthrough for me. I actually didn't play this one on the Wii. It was getting so much bad press because of the controls that are apparently not too fun on the Wii. I'm really hoping that this experience on the Switch will be updated because as I said, it'll be a first experience for me. So if they really did a good job on porting this game and really making that control scheme a little better and a little more friendly, well then you know what? I might turn out with a great experience for my first playthrough through the Zelda. And it's probably the only Zelda I've never actually played through. Now next we jump to July 20th with Chris Tales finally releasing. I'm saying finally because this is an indie RPG that we've been waiting for for quite a while. We've been hearing about in different directs and different locations. And basically the release date has been continuously pushed back. But looks like we're finally really going to be getting it on July 20th. Now this is supposed to be a throwback to classic JRPGs and they throw out names like Final Fantasy VI, Chrono Trigger and Valkyrie Profile. Now that is a dangerous game they're playing because throwing out names like that is going to put the bar super high for this game. There is a second thing worrying me about Chris Tales. It's releasing in a month that is overflowing with huge JRPGs. And at its price of $39.99, although it's cheaper, it's not so much cheaper that people will pick this up on top of another $60 game. And I don't think a lot of people are going to set aside a Zelda or set aside uh, Ease 9 or Monster Hunter Stories 2 to try Chris Tales, which is a new IP. So although I do think this game is going to be good, I think it's going to have quite a hill to climb because they are releasing it in a packed month of JRPGs. But nonetheless, there is a downloadable demo. You can try out the game for yourself and hopefully Chris Tales will have a positive launch. Now we also have a second game releasing on July 20th that I'm personally am quite excited for, Cotton Reboot, releasing at $39.99. Now as the title suggests, this is a reboot of an original Japanese cutie up. If you don't know what a cutie up, it's a shoot 'em up with cutesy designs. And Cotton Reboot apparently is one of the original cutie ups that we never really got here in the West. Now if you follow the channel, you know I'm a fan of shoot 'em ups and cutie ups are a nice flip on the original design so I can't wait to play this one I will be picking it up day one I've pre-ordered a physical edition now for the next date we jump to July 27th and July 27th is going to be packed with four games releasing that we're going to take a look at the first of these four is the great Ace Eternity Chronicles which is basically a prequel to Phoenix Wright that we already know out here in the west this is once again a prequel that we didn't really get stateside and I am really excited for it releasing at $39.99. Now, if you follow the channel once again, you know that normally I'm not into narrative driven games. However, a while back when the Phoenix Wright collection went on sale, I gave it a try and you know what? I liked the game. And this one really seems to have a detective flip on it. So I am definitely going to be giving this one a try. I'm not sure I'll be able to pick it up day one and pop out a review. I will be trying though, but I definitely want to give it a try. Good thing as well, if you were on the fence, we got a really long gameplay trailer at E3. You can check out the whole thing on YouTube. Now, if you thought that we were done with JRPGs for the month of July, well, you'd be wrong. 
because on July 27th, we're having Neo The World Ends With You release, which is another hugely awaited sequel to a very successful original JRPG, this one from Square Enix. And this is another full priced release at $59.99, and it also has a free downloadable demo to try out the game. Now this has a new set of characters apparently this time around, but the same gameplay that you were used to from the first one. I know a lot of people are super excited for this one, which is why I'm saying that the month of July is really overloaded with huge JRPG releases. Not only that, but last month we saw the new Disgaea release at the end of the month. Honestly, I don't know how we're going to pack all this in one month. Now, also releasing on July 27th, we're going to have Darius Burst, another Chronicle EX Plus at $39.99. Now, this is more of a classic shoot 'em up, and it is another very long standing series that we have in the shoot 'em up genre. This is another game I personally have pre ordered physically, I'll be picking up and most likely playing through over the first few days that it releases. This is a series that is sort of blended between hardcore and approachable. It is not quite as hardcore as, let's say, an R type, but it is not yet as approachable as a general cutie up. Now, last for the 27th of July, we have Samurai Warriors 5 releasing. And this game has two versions, the general version at $59.99 and the digital deluxe at $89.99. And although a lot of people are already convinced whether they're going to buy this game or not, it is that traditional warrior style combat and maybe more eyes are on it than usual because of the release of Age of Calamity just at the end of last year. So maybe more people will be looking to continue on that warrior style gameplay in a different genre set in a samurai universe. The one problem I have with this game is the huge price that they're asking for the extra digital content. I find that 30 extra dollars upon release of a game right away of extra digital content and some are weapons packs so it's not only visual upgrades, I find they're being a little bit greedy with this release. But most likely people have paid it before, they'll be paying it again. I just wanted to give my two cents for the release and the incredible amounts that they're asking for a digital deluxe extra. Now last, but definitely not least for the month of July, we have what's probably, in my opinion, the most intriguing release coming out on July 30th, Horror Tales The Wine at $14.99. Now this seems to be a sort of first person survival horror game along the lines of what we got from the last Resident Evil entries. However, it seems to have no combat involved. At least we don't see any in the trailer. It's more all about escaping this unstoppable foe that seems to be continuously chasing you down. If the suspense factor is held up throughout the whole game, this could be quite an experience. And this is one that I'm actually really looking forward to trying out. And at the end of the month, I will definitely be picking up. So that is pretty much it for my list of what in my opinion are the top releases coming to the Switch that are currently announced for the month of July. What do you think? Are there any big releases that I may be glossed over for the month of July or that I missed? You can always let me know in the comments down below. I'd also like to know what game you are super excited for from this list. Like what game is going to be a day one pickup for you? But anyway, just on the way out, I want to thank all my supporters as usual. You can always join the channel in the membership link down below. And don't forget, as I said at the beginning of the video, if you like this content, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my future videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.